it is the end of July and I thought it would be a good time to share my July favorites with you. Before it got too deep in August, if I waited until next week it would be kind of... I mean, where does time go? I don't know. Anyway, July, July, July. We have been away a lot. Uh, so that's going to kind of play into some later favorites. But as usual, I'm going to go through kind of a mishmash of things. My favorite clothes and accessories, beauty items, home goods-ish, uh, multimedia, and then also food that I'm really digging right now. So first of all, clothes and accessories. If you missed the announcement, I don't know how you, you would have at this point, but I am pregnant and I'm not going to talk about pregnancy things in my uh, non-pregnancy content as much as possible, but every once in a while things are going to pop up, especially my favorites because a lot of my favorite things have to do with pregnancy and my clothing favorite definitely is a maternity item, although I don't think it has to be. Um, I just think it's a really nice shirt and it's the Gap Maternity Linen T-shirts. I'm actually, um, well, I'm wearing one today, but then I also have this one and these have just been my favorite travel tees. They are slightly see-through, but when you're wearing maternity pants and you have the band that goes all the way up to your bra, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I like about them is they're not tight, they're not cinched, they're not rouged, they're not anything, they're a really nice length, um, they wash up great despite being linen, you do have to hang them dry, but they dry really fast, um, and you just have to wash them in cold water, you know, so they don't shrink, um, and they're, they're, they're a little bit longer in the back, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, oh hold on, it would help if I held it up properly, you can see the front, the back is a little bit longer, so especially for me lately, I've been enjoying traveling in leggings, this covers my butt all the way, which is what I'm going for. And it's just such a cozy, nice, light shirt that feels really good on. So I've really been enjoying that. Also, these shoes. These are the Merrill, now hold on. I have to look up the name. I wrote it down because it's so weird. Graspo Air. I don't really know what the name means, but these sneakers I actually bought just before we started traveling a lot, it was after my last haul, which was back in spring. Really haven't done a lot of non-maternity related shopping but since then. I am gonna have a maternity haul for you guys next week, most likely, early next week. But um, this is kind of a standalone purchase, so I didn't have a, like an opportunity to share about it. But I love these shoes. These are my everyday go-to sneakers. Now, I still really enjoy the Keen, I think it's the Presidio shoes that I bought last year as my walking shoe, especially with that Art Italy trip in mind. Uh, but they are just a little bit more substantial of a shoe and I really wanted like a regular sneaker to have. But I wanted one that wasn't all white but still but wasn't terribly bright either because that seems to be the option. Either you get like black sneakers really easily, white sneakers pretty easily, or like super bright neon sneakers. And that's just, I, you know, for an everyday shoe, I'm not looking for that. And I also wanted a shoe that I could wear as a walking shoe, but also could double as a workout shoe when I'm traveling so I don't have to pack an additional pair of workout shoes. Um, whereas with the Keen ones, they don't really work as well as a workout shoe because they're kind of heavy. It's a really nice and lightweight, removable sole, so I could put in my custom orthotics. Um, and I just really like the color scheme. To me, it's kind of really easy to go with anything. It's neutral-ish, but it's got the nice little pop of mint, which I like. And they're just super comfy, and I really like them. And then my last um, accessory favorite is this bag. Now, I've actually talked about the Henry Bendel mini jet sitter backpack this winter. When I fell in love with it, I have it in black. I wore it for months. I just fell in love with it. I'm the kind of person who doesn't like carrying a black bag year round. I like something a little more colorful. And I have a lot of wonderful colorful crossbody purses, but I noticed that it was getting a little bit uncomfortable um, carrying kind of a medium sized bag crossbody with all my stuff in it um, with my growing body, you know, with being pregnant and the changes and everything. Um, and I really wanted to go back to the backpack style, so I bought myself this bag in this beautiful blue. I honestly don't know if this color is still available. I've had this for a couple of months. I love that it has the um, khaki colored straps. I think it's just so cute. I get a lot of compliments on this bag, but it's a bag that I have reviewed before. I will link the my bag buzz post on this for you guys so you can check it out if you want to see more details. That bag is in black. 
I don't generally buy the same bag in two colors, but that's how much I like this bag. So this is like my spring summer version, and then the black one is like my fall winter one. And it's just, to me, it's so versatile. It holds so much, but it's light because it's this nice nylon fabric. Love the slip pocket in the back for my phone. And it's just easy, and you can carry it. You can actually carry it as a crossbody bag. I've never done it that way, but because I love it as a backpack. But I just, I can't say enough good things about that bag. It's just... It's a wonderful bag. Now for beauty, I have changed up my beauty products a little bit and I'm gonna do a dedicated post on kind of my maternity beauty products at a later point, but um, a couple of things in this month's mix are hit or miss products for me. Starting with the new foundation I've been using for the past couple of months really, it's the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Pure Brightening Serum Foundation. Um, it has a SPF 20 in it, it has a, it's a actual sunblock. Uh, like a mineral sunblock, not a chemical sunscreen. Um, I really, really like this foundation for the first like hour or so of wear, and then I don't like it so much. And that's kind of my love-hate relationship with it because it's very finicky. It is extremely thin, fluid, like liquid, and it sinks into, if you have any imperfections on your face, any dry patches, especially like, I've been getting some dryness up by my hairline, and I have some like larger pores kind of around here, it really sinks into that, and if you're like close up to me, you can see it. But I really, really like the way it wears, um, I mean, not wears, but the way it feels. It just feels like I'm not wearing anything. It's light and airy and breathable. I would call it light coverage, not even medium coverage. I don't know, maybe you could build it up. I find the less you use of this, the less I use of it, the better. Um, and again, I really enjoy it, but then I really dislike it at the same time, so I don't, I don't really know how better to describe it. Um, I'm still kind of looking for something in this kind of family that's just, I, my skin's been better lately, so I don't need a whole lot of coverage, but just something to kind of even things out, um, but has, you know, good ingredients in it. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. But I have been using this, and like every time I wear makeup. Now granted, I don't wear makeup every day. I usually only wear makeup on the days I'm filming and on the days that I'm going out and doing something kind of special. Like if I'm just going to the grocery store or yoga class, I don't wear makeup for those things. Um, also at the same time, I had picked up the Bare Minerals Stroke of Light Eye Brightener um, because the under eye concealer, I guess I would say, I don't really have anything to conceal, but I use it as a brightener. I was using before by CoverGirl, I still really like, but it was just like two shades too light for me now that we're in summer and I'm just getting more color naturally. I wear a lot of sunblock, but I still get color. Um, this is just a little bit darker of a shade. I like the ingredients in it, and um, it's just really easy. It's got one of those little doe foot things, you know, just easy to pop on and blend in. Um, so I like, I like that a lot. Uh, for lip products, again, this is my other kind of love-hate product, and this is the Bare Minerals, what do they call this? Pop of, pa Pop of Passion lip oil balm and it's a really weird concept it's supposed to be somewhere between a lip oil and a lip balm like a tinted lip balm and i really like the color and i really like the way it goes on but then sometimes it's like too like if it gets a little warm it gets too mushy and it applies all wacky um, so it only kind of works for me if i'm applying it in my house and because it's this consistency it does not have much of a lasting power so i've been taken to wearing a lip liner underneath it. Um, I like the way it feels on my lips, but again, it just doesn't. And then my camera died. <laughs> my battery died, and I actually didn't notice it until much later, and it cut out a little bit of the video, so I'm just gonna refilm this one part I missed. I basically had finished talking about that lip product. What I was going to say when it cut out was that it just, I, f I feel like I can only put it on when I'm at home in like a climate controlled place so and like I really like it when I first put it on but then I can't take it with me because it's hot and it's summer and it just doesn't apply as well when it's warm I it's a weird thing but I I do like it but I also like don't like it at the same time so those were kind of two love-hate things uh, but something that I only love um, actually two things I want to talk about were my bath and body product favorites right now um, and it's again and I think I talked about Pacifica last month I've just been really enjoying their brand lately um, I've been using their lotions um, really pretty exclusively 
uh, and I really enjoy this scent. This is the Hawaiian Ruby Guava and it smells like tropical paradise. It is like it is just tropical fruity heaven. <laughs> um, so in the shower I've been using the body wash and I've used their body washes before. I have them out at our um, Utah house and I use them there whenever we go. They're sulfate free but they really suds up nicely and they have just so so fragrant. If you're not into like particularly fragranced things this probably is not going to be your cup of tea but if you like kind of that tropical fruity punch like you know, scent, you might really like that. And it's not like fruit punch, it doesn't smell like fake. It just smells like so refreshing. It's got a little bit of a tart, tart note too, but I really like that. And then I've also been using the, um, their Intensely Moisturizing Body Butter for the last few months. Um, and again, this is a product I've used for years off and on, but I've just been really using it a lot. And to kind of match that, it's just my favorite scent right now is the Hawaiian Ruby Guava. This is a really nice body butter. It's definitely more emollient. It's more moisturizing, but uh, my skin's been strangely drier than usual this summer, so it's been really working for me. Um, and especially when we go to Utah, I know I'm going to be like a crispy critter because <laughs> it is so arid there. It is such dry mountain air, and um, I'm sure I'm going to be lathering that stuff on like all day long. So that's the bits that my camera cut out, and now we'll go back to when I originally filmed the video. So as I mentioned, we've been traveling up a storm. We're actually home for like a second and then we're going to Utah for a long time. But uh, so I don't have a lot of home goods favorites this month honestly because I haven't really been home. But I have a lot of travel related favorites so I thought I'd share a couple of my top picks with you. First of all, the Eagle Creek Packet Cubes. I've shared these in many a packing video over the years. They just make packing so much more of an easy breezy thing to do and also unpacking and also just like clothes and things management in transit. And I'm actually going to post a whole video dedicated to packet cubes, which ones are my favorites, how I use them um, very soon for you guys. So stay tuned for that if you want to see more. But I don't know what I would do without them now because they've just become part of my packing routine over the years and I've used them for a long time. <laughs> um, and then also for travel, I've been really loving my friend's um, headphones. These are the Taylor headphones. Um, Don gave these to me for Christmas. Sorry, my phone just buzzed and it scared me. Um, Don gave me these for Christmas. First of all, they're like kind of the cutest headphones I've ever seen. And not that I really care that much about that, but you know, it does help. He got me the tortoise shell package, which is really pretty. You can like change out the caps. I mean, I haven't done that, but you can, in fact, I think mine came with like oil slick caps too, but I really like the tortoise ones. And they're not noise canceling, but they're pretty darn close, but they don't require a battery or charging, which is nice for travel especially, so you don't have to worry about that. I love the little leather pouch that they come with because it's perfectly sized to store them and protect them. It's like lined in this fuzzy thing and it's just really, just nice and also great for travel. Um, and I use my headphones all the time when traveling. I, when I'm on a plane, I'm generally editing something or writing a blog post or editing photos or a video, whatever. Um, I'm always on headphones. And when I'm not working, I will be listening to a book on tape while I'm knitting. Um, and also it's great, like when you're traveling with somebody else and you're at your destination, and maybe I wanna do some work or I wanna watch a YouTube video or whatever, and Don doesn't necessarily want to hear those things if we're in the same small space together and not our big house where we have separate places to go to do those things. Um, it's nice to have headphones to, you know, be considerate um, to your travel companion. So that's kind of in place in my home goods this month. Um, I hope you understand why. But if you'd like to see some of my other travel favorites, I added a little part to the sidebar of my blog where I show kind of my, my favorite travel aids. So you can check that out if you want to. It's just a little like scroll through widget, widget thing. I was gonna call it a widgie. That's not right. That is not right at all. Okay, now for multimedia, I did finish another book on tape because of the traveling. Um, generally during takeoff and landing, I'll listen to a book on tape while I knit and then I'll be on like a computer 
my computer for the bulk of the flight. I'm like having trouble speaking. I don't know what's going on. So I listened to this last month, um, Chelsea Handler's You Gonna Be Kidding Me. And this was the first, I think I've read a Chelsea Handler book before, but this was the first one I've listened to her on tape. And she's another comedian writer. Um, she has a show, I believe. I don't know if she still does, but she had a show on the Eat Network. I've never seen it. Um, she's definitely got a cruder sense of humor than other people that I have listened to their books on tape before. And this wasn't necessarily an autobiography, although it was autobiographical. At least I thought it was until the very end of the book when they have all like the disclaimers and it was like, this is a work of fiction. So I was really confused because I thought it was a collection of stories from her travels but then at the end, it's like, this is a work of fiction. So I, I don't really know what the deal is with that. Um, but I did enjoy it. It's just definitely more like in your face, blunt, crude humor. So keep that in mind. But she's definitely entertaining to listen to. And it's really neat to hear authors voice their own um, books because you can really get a sense of their personalities in that way. And then I actually read a book. I know, I finally read a book. Uh, honestly, I haven't been reading because I haven't been, I haven't taken a, like a bath. Of course I shower every day, but I haven't taken a bath, which is my usual reading time in many, many months. And there are different reasons for that. Um, but I can go into that another time if you want to know. Uh, but that's my reading time. And so I just haven't been reading and I've been really busy between travel and, and trying to keep up, you know, with sharing with you guys and stuff too. But, um, I, we got delayed on our last flight coming back from New York a uh, few hours, so I picked this book up in the airport and it's Wild by Cheryl Strayed and uh, the subtitle is From Lost to Found on the Pacific Crest Trail. And this is just an amazing kind of woman finding herself story. Um, you know, biographical, autobiographical uh, about a young woman who was lost you know, in her life, just things kind of fell apart. I'm not going to go too much into what fell apart because I feel like that gives too much away. But basically she, I mean, you're going to know that she ends up hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And this is a trail that goes all the way from some point in Mexico, I believe, all the way up the Pacific coast to, I think it actually ends in Canada. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not I'm not like 100% certain, but uh, she hikes a big, a big bulk of it. I think um, something like 100 days and like, was it 1500 miles? Now I'm not remembering. I flew through this. I read most of this during that delay. Um, and actually I'm going to read it again when I'm in um, Utah because I feel like I want to read it more carefully. Um, but to me, it's kind of along the same vein as um, the Eat, Pray, Love story. Um, I can, I'm blanking. Elizabeth Gilbert, that's it. Which is one of my favorites. I read that book maybe every few years. I just really like those kinds of um, true accounts. Uh, stories of people um, discovering themselves, especially after, you know, trials and hardships. And I just find that so inspirational. And I just, it's just, it just reminds me of the strength of the human spirit and the determination of, of the spirit. Um, so I, I recommend this. I haven't seen the movie. There's, there's Reese on the cover. I kind of want to see the movie. There are some parts of the book that I don't necessarily look forward to seeing on the big screen, but I think it's a good story and I think it would make a good movie. I don't know if it was a good movie, but you guys will have to let me know, but I'm definitely going to read that book again next month because I so enjoyed it. Now, um, in terms of TV, like I said, we haven't been home. We haven't really been watching a lot of shows, but Don's really into American Ninja Warrior. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I'll try to find a link to something about it below, which I'll put below, but, um, it's basically a sh like a crazy obstacle course that looks virtually impossible that people try to make it through and it's a competition. And so I've been watching this with him occasionally and it's just, I'm not usually into those kinds of shows but I find it really interesting and I like the little backstories they do. It's kind of like, reminds me of the Olympics when they do backstories on the athletes, which is my favorite, well, it's not my favorite part, but it's one of my favorite parts of watching the Olympics is learning more about the athletes' like actual lives and how they've trained and, and the, what they've overcome and all that. Um, kind of in the same vein as that book, actually, come to think of it. Um, but it's just kind of a fun show to watch every once in a while, and it's just amazing to see the strength and uh, the, just the sheer grit 
of these people to make it through these crazy obstacle courses like like no joke doesn't look like any human could do but somehow some do um, so that's kind of worth checking out I think if you'd like something just to be entertained um, and to see some like crazy acts of physical strength and then for music I don't have a specific album I've been listening to lately and I don't like to do repeats that I've talked about a lot lately um, and I know I talked about Dixie Chicks last summer so I'm not gonna talk about specifically again but I've been listening to Dixie Chicks a lot over the last few weeks and it's just I've been in the mood for it because I'm gearing up to go west I mean that sounds so so cheesy but whenever I'm in Utah I listen to them or when I'm about to go it kind of gets me in the mood uh, and my favorite albums are Fly, Home, and um, oh, I'm blanking like Pregnancy Brain is no joke Wide Open Spaces like duh um, so those are the three I've kind of been rotating between. And then lastly for Tasty Treats, I actually didn't bring them upstairs because they're frozen and I didn't want them to melt. But I thought I'd share more about the kind of bread that I'm really into. And this is really over the last couple of years. I don't have a gluten sensitivity or allergy or anything like that. But um, I found that I just digest this kind of bread, this sprouted bread, um, better on a more regular, when I'm consuming it on a more regular basis. I can still eat regular bread, no problem. I just don't eat it every day. If I eat it every day, I start to get get a little bloatier. So I don't know what happens exactly, but um, this Ezekiel bread, I can eat every day. So I have um, the regular, they're like four, nine, I don't really know how to pronounce what it is, but they're toast. I mean, I have that toasted almost every day with my eggs with butter, and it's just really nice. If you like kind of a gritty bread, like with a nice bite to it, I really recommend that. And just lately, I've been getting into their cinnamon raisin English muffins, which I really like um, spread um, toasted and then spread with peanut butter, and so the peanut butter kind of melts and gets all oozy. Almond butter is good too. Um, oh. So yummy. Um, so those are kind of my favorite. I thought it'd be fun to kind of share that. I don't, fun, I don't know, it's bread, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and that's it for this month. I feel like I flew through that. Maybe not, it's probably still like 25 minutes long because you guys know I can't do anything less long than that. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing uh, my favorites for the month. I do have a giveaway for you guys. I'm giving away two sets of my favorite, uh, current favorite, um, lotion and body wash, as well as one of my favorite loofahs, brand new, obviously, loofah, and these will be brand new too. To two of you, uh, one of my standard giveaways, if you just head on over to my Courtney blog post, which I'll have linked below, which also has links to all of these products and pictures if you're interested in all that. Uh, and it's open for one week. It's open internationally. If you're under the age of 18, you just have to have parental permission. And uh, I will contact the winners directly by email. Um, so good luck to all of you if you're interested in entering that. And um, I'd love to know what some of your favorites were from the month of July if you care to share. I hope that the end of the month has been going well for you guys and that August hopefully is off to a good start whenever, I mean, it's like tomorrow. So <laughs> happy August tomorrow. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching you guys. I'll see you really, really soon. Um, I like forgot what I was gonna say there. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye.